Hey y'all, I'm back with another video. This is Nicole Ali. Uh, this is the second review for the day. I want to do a few more. I like doing these movie reviews and show reviews. I watch a lot of Netflix and chill by myself, but <laughs> or with friends and loved ones. But yeah, I saw this show called Seven Seconds. There's been a lot of talk about it. I will try to find the discussion that people had on Facebook. Um, there's a guy named Curtis Jr. I think Curtis D. Jr. on Facebook. That He's one of my friends on there. I'll try to find a discussion from his page and link that in the description box as well. Um, and so let's get on to the review. This is the trailer for the show. If you haven't seen it already, there will be spoilers. So I'm gonna let you click away if you need to. If you haven't seen it and you wanna hear a review, then stay right where you are and continue watching. So here we go with the trailer. You worked on set before? I'm sick of their eyes. They're looking at you, wanting answers. They don't need answers. They're dead. My son laid in the cold, in pain, for hours. And whoever did this is free. No one saw you, right? You keep your mouth shut. Anyone asks you what you're doing in the park, you tell them your job. It was an accident. I wake up in a black kid. I don't fucking accidents anymore. The black teenager was left out in the cold to die. No one cares about Brenton Butler. His life does not factor into the equation of this city. I'm doing my job. Your job's locking up other cops now. I didn't become a cop to break the rules. I'm gonna turn myself in. You're a good cop. You live for a dying breed. And we take care of our own. I want you to think about what kind of father you'd be behind bars. They're not gonna stop until you put them away. You never know what happened. might ever know is God. God didn't run my son down in the street and leave him to die. A man did that. So... <clears throat> The synopsis of this show, Seven Seconds, was that a young man, I think he was 15 years old, Brenton, was killed by a police officer. Um, and he was run over by a police officer. He hit him in the snow with his car. He called for backup. He called his, um, his partners and in crime other police officers aka race soldiers to come help him with this incident when they showed up they left the boy to die and they went to um, see the boy's body everyone went to see the boy's body except for the cop who killed him with his car with his Jeep and from then you have the introduction of the assistant district attorney, which is the black woman, the younger black woman with the straight hair uh, in this movie, or the show, excuse me. And she is an alcoholic. She's a low key bed wench, you know, all of the above. She's irresponsible. She's disorganized. She's showing up to talk to the parents with their son laying in intensive care smell like alcohol I mean she's just all over the place so they set that up that stage up with that character in the beginning which I did not appreciate 
but it also shows the reality of how black lives do not matter, especially in a case where a child, he eventually died. He was killed by this officer. The officer who did it actually showed up that night when the child was there and the parents were there, their church group was there, the mother and father are big in the church, they're on the choir, the mother sings in the choir, the father plays the uh, piano, you know, the son, um, very well-mannered child. He wasn't involved with any gang activity, but that was the first thing that the other lawyer, the white man, assumed, oh, he's just a banger, you know, whatever. He actually said something like that in front of the parents and almost got his head split because the uncle, I think the father's brother, just showed up. He's from the military, still had on his military uniform at the hospital. And he almost got his head split for that, for making those comments. But the black woman who's the assistant district attorney, she has a lot of demons in her closet, which were clearly portrayed in the show, throughout the show. Um... So in the first episode, you're just getting a, a taste of what is to come. And after episode one, from episode from episode one all throughout the rest of the show, the fuckery ensues. They take you all the way through how the parents are feeling and what the parents have had to deal with with losing their son because they had a feeling that he would probably die because he lost almost all of his blood he, he almost bled out he had a lot of bodily injuries a lot of um, internal bleeding they didn't notify the parents when he passed away the mother came to visit her son and his body was gone so it shows the discrimination from all different points from the politicians to the police to the hospital to the district attorneys, to, you know, everything, the school, everything, the school that the mother worked at because she was a teacher, didn't really show her a lot of sympathy when she had just lost her son at that time. She didn't know. And so you're as the audience, you're sitting there on the edge of your seat because you already know who did it. And you're sitting there on the edge of your seat like, are they going to find out who did it? Are they going to, is the man going to come forward? Is he going to turn himself in? The night he tries to turn himself in, there's a protest because they want these cops to be punished for what they've done. And at some point, I thought that Regina King, who plays the mother, you know, I thought that she was going to be um, put in a position where she would take back revenge, similar to how I think Jodie Foster's character was in a movie when she took back revenge for someone killing her daughter, I believe or how Taraji P. Henson um, in one of the movies that she was in, she flew all the way to uh, North Korea to get her son back in one of the movies. That was based on a true story. But that didn't happen here. She did most of the detective work more than the detectives in the, in the, in the show. Detectives are trying to cover it up. These are narcotics um, detectives. So you already know they are kind of dirty takes a special kind of person to do detective work in vice and narcotics and she was doing the detective work she found out who the man was who killed her son or had a had a um inclination that he could have done it she suspected him of doing it before the police before the, the district attorney knew what was going on she too busy out here messing up every other episode right so the show had me, it was cringeworthy. A lot of it was cringeworthy. And a lot of it is true to life. Because at the end of the show, I'm just going to get to the end. You know, he doesn't, the police officer is not found guilty. Even after the district attorney, assistant district attorney finds evidence to show that he was lying when he said he saw his body. There's no way he could have seen his body. And I'll leave y'all up to see, you know, how she figured that out. But, yeah, it was a good show overall because it was true to reality. And I know as black people, we tend to want good, happy endings on a lot of these shows, especially shows that are dealing with um, police brutality and us being discriminated against and injured and harmed and killed. 
um, outright killed by police officers. But in this case, you know, it was more true to life where there is no justice for the family. There is no justice for the community. And the people who commit the crimes go on committing the crimes. And the people who are committing the crimes are the ones who are supposed to be upholding the law. So it was a sad show to me, especially at the end, because you had all these mothers who were coming to support and help Brenton's mom, played by Regina King, and telling her that, you know, it's better just to forgive. And she was like, fuck that. I ain't forgiving nobody. The men who, the men, people, the person who killed my son is out here walking free, like she said in the trailer. And I, I agree with her. I was like, man, fuck that. Us, uh, us apologizing and forgiving people is not the way to go. She's like, I want revenge. They took my son from me. I can't get him back. You know, so I may come back with another review because I, I can't remember all the episodes one by one. I'm just giving a um, comprehensive, you know, overall review of the show. I consider, I would consider um, watching some of the episodes again just to do a more detailed review about certain characters and how they develop certain characters in the show. And um, yeah, that's it. But that's it for this video. Hopefully it won't get taken down by copyright, but I'll do the same thing I did for the Roxanne, Roxanne movie review. I'll leave a link in the description box to my Facebook page and I'll just post it there. But other than that, um, the production was very good. It was a next Netflix original, so I expected the production value to be very high, the quality to be high. I'll leave you with that. And let's just, I'm going to play the, the trailer one more time. Because I figure if it's going to get taken down, I might as well have as much, um, as much in here as I can get. So let me play it again. And that'll be it for the video. Y'all have a great day. You worked on homicide before? I'm sick of their eyes. Me. Even when you're dead, they're looking at you wanting answers. The dead don't need answers. They're dead. My son laid in the cold, in pain for hours. And whoever did this is free. No one saw you, right? You keep your mouth shut. Anyone asks you what you're doing in the park, you tell them your job. It was an accident. A white cop and a black kid. There are no fucking accidents anymore. The black teenager was left out in the cold to die. No one cares about Brenton Bowman. His life does not factor into the equation of this city. I'm doing my job. Job's locking up other cops now. I didn't become a cop to break the rules. I'm gonna turn myself in. You're a good cop. You and me, we're a dying breed. And we take care of our own. I want you to think about what kind of father you'd be behind bars. Gonna stop until you put them away. You never know what happened. And the only one who might ever know is God. God didn't run my son down in the street and leave him to die. A man did that.